Hey, what's up growers? Today we're talking about the final moments of cultivation, the last few weeks before harvest. And if you're not treating this part of the cycle like its own strategy, you're almost definitely leaving potency and flavor on the table. This is the stage where a grow can go from pretty good to genuinely next level. Not because you suddenly change genetics or magically fix everything, but because the plant is finishing its chemistry. Cannabinoids and terpenes aren't just sitting there waiting for you to chop. They're dynamic, and the way you manage the final stretch directly affects what ends up in the jar. Imagine unlocking the hidden potential in every single plant. What if I told you the final weeks are the most critical for maximizing potency and flavor, and most growers miss crucial steps because they're focused on the wrong variables, or they're following advice that sounds good but isn't backed by real plant physiology. Today, we're going to break down the science behind end of cycle decisions, environmental controls, nutrient finesse, and lighting adjustments so you can consistently hit peak potency and preserve aroma without sacrificing yield or inviting problems like mold and degradation. Let's start with the uncomfortable truth. The final weeks can matter more than the entire growth cycle combined in terms of final quality because this is when the plant is allocating resources into resin production, ripening trichomes, and completing the chemical profile that defines the finished product. Earlier in the grow, you're building structure and biomass. Late in the grow, you're shaping the quality of what that biomass becomes. And that difference is everything. A big part of this comes down to trichome maturation. Trichomes aren't just there, they change. They develop, they fill, and they shift in chemistry over time. That visible progression you see under magnification is your best real-time indicator of where the plant is in its ripening process, and it's directly linked to potency and flavor. When growers mess up the end of cycle, it's often because they either harvest too early, chasing loud terps but missing full cannabinoid development, or they harvest too late thinking more time equals more potency, while the plant is actually degrading and losing what they're trying to preserve. So today, I want you to think of the last few weeks as a power play. This is where you bring in what I call the secret weapons, not gimmicks, not superstition, but simple targeted adjustments that align the environment and inputs with what the plant is biologically trying to do. And the first weapon is environmental mastery because your environment is the potency dial. Temperature and humidity control near harvest isn't just about comfort or avoiding mold. It influences metabolic rate, transpiration, and the stability of volatile compounds. As plants mature, Slightly lower temperatures can help protect terpene retention because terpenes are volatile. High temps at the end of flower can literally drive off aroma and push the plant into stress patterns that reduce quality. You're not trying to shock the plant and you're not trying to freeze it. You're trying to create a stable finishing environment that encourages resin preservation and reduces the risk of late stage issues. Humidity is just as important. In late flower, dense flowers become a microclimate. Even if your room reads fine, inside the canopy, you can have trapped humidity that encourages mold or bud rot. Lowering humidity appropriately in the final weeks helps prevent those issues, but it also changes the plant's water dynamics. When transpiration is balanced and not excessive, you can avoid pushing the plant into a last minute stress response that dries it out too fast or causes it to panic mature. The goal is a controlled finish, not a stressed finish. Then there's the dark period. This is one of the most common myths that gets repeated because it sounds plausible. Give the plant 24 to 72 hours of darkness and it'll boost potency. The reality is that plants don't create cannabinoids like a pre-harvest cheat code. Cannabinoid and terpene production is tied to genetics, ripeness, and overall metabolic health across the flowering cycle. Darkness can change some internal processes, sure, but it also stops photosynthesis, and extended darkness can encourage moisture stagnation and increase risk if your environment isn't perfect. If you're going to experiment with darkness, treat it like an experiment, not a rule, 
and understand that the biggest gains usually come from more boring things, stability, ripeness, and proper dry cure. Airflow is the unsung hero here. In late flower, airflow isn't just about comfort. It's about preventing stagnant moisture pockets while keeping leaf surface temperature stable. Proper airflow reduces mold pressure and supports consistent transpiration without drying the plant into stress. And if you're trying to preserve terpenes, you don't want hot, turbulent, drying wind blasting the buds. You want steady, gentle circulation that keeps the environment uniform. Now let's talk nutrients, because this is where you can dramatically improve the finished product or accidentally ruin it. The idea of feeding for finish isn't about pumping the plant full of more nutrients at the last second. It's about reducing the wrong inputs, maintaining the right ones, and timing changes so the plant can complete ripening without carrying excess salts and harshness into harvest. This is where flushing comes in. Flushing is one of those topics where people get emotional because a lot of growers treat it like a religion. The practical goal of a strategic flush is simple. You're trying to avoid a harsh finished product by preventing excess mineral buildup especially if you've been running heavy EC late in flower. But flushing isn't starving the plant for no reason. It's a controlled wind down. If you flush too early, you can reduce yield and stop ripening short. If you flush too late, you're not really changing much. Timing matters and it should match your medium, your feeding style, and how your plant looks in late flower. Finishing nutrients are another area people misunderstand. A true finishing strategy isn't about adding random boosters. It's about supporting ripening with targeted inputs that don't leave behind excess residue. For some growers, that means easing nitrogen down to reduce leafy, grassy characteristics while keeping the plant healthy enough to finish strong. For others, it means maintaining key minerals that support metabolic stability while avoiding the late flower mistake of more PK equals more potency because that's not how potency works. Potency is largely a function of genetics and maturity, and you can definitely influence quality with good management, but you can't brute force cannabinoids by overfeeding. The most common flushing mistake is either doing it too aggressively or doing it blindly. If you slam the plant with extreme changes, you can cause late stage stress that reduces quality and increases foxtailing or weird ripening patterns. If you never adjust anything and just keep feeding heavy to the end, you can end up with a harsher product and a messy dry. The winning approach is controlled, gradual, and tied to what the plant is actually doing. Next is lighting, and this is where a lot of growers miss subtle but powerful opportunities. Light spectrum and scheduling near harvest can influence morphology and expression. And while you're not going to rewrite genetics in the final two weeks, you can absolutely shape how the plant finishes. Red and far red light are often overlooked here. Red light supports photosynthetic efficiency, and far red can influence plant signaling and phytochrome responses, which can affect stretch behavior earlier on and potentially influence end of day responses. The key is that spectrum is not just brightness, it's information to the plant. There's also the idea of a final push and you need to be careful with that mindset. Increasing intensity too late can cause bleaching, terpene loss, and stress. But stabilizing intensity while optimizing environment can allow the plant to keep producing and ripening without degrading. Some growers find that slight schedule adjustments at the end help manage heat load and preserve aroma. The principle is simple. You want the plant finishing at peak efficiency, not peak stress. Now comes the payoff Harvest timing. This is where all the work cashes out, and this is also where you can make the biggest mistake in the shortest amount of time. The perfect harvest window depends on your goals because peak potency and desired effects aren't always the same thing. Some growers want a brighter, more energetic profile. Others want a heavier finish. Trichomes tell you where the plant is leaning, but you need to interpret them correctly and consistently. The answer isn't one magic ratio that applies to every strain. It's learning what your genetics look like at their best 
and harvesting in that window consistently. And here's the part that too many growers ignore. Even if you harvest perfectly, you can destroy potency and terpenes in drying and curing. The science is straightforward. Terpenes are volatile and cannabinoids can degrade with heat, light, and improper conditions. A controlled dry preserves aroma. A slow, stable cure locks in quality. If you rush drying, you lose terpenes and end up with a flat product. If you cure incorrectly, you risk mold or you end up with harshness that never fully smooths out. The end of cycle strategy doesn't stop at chop, it carries through to the jar. So to bring it all together, the final weeks are where you stop thinking like you're growing a plant and start thinking like you're finishing a product. Environment becomes precision, nutrients become finesse, light becomes stability and intentional signaling, and harvest becomes a calculated window, followed by a dry and cure designed to preserve everything you worked for. If you want, in a future video, we can go even deeper into advanced post-harvest techniques, including drying strategy variations, terpene preservation methods, cure optimization, and how to avoid the subtle mistakes that ruin top shelf potential. If you learned something today, hit like, subscribe, and drop a comment with what you're currently doing in your final weeks and what you want to optimize next. Well, that concludes this video, guys. Again, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.